with the Gambi <coughs> Your Royal Highness, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> On one occasion, after an eloquent introduction like this, a lady came up to me at the, at the following reception and said, I understand you are a fascinating man, she said. Fascinate me. <laughs> it was one of the less successful conversations <laughs> that I have had. In 1951, before I was Henry Kissinger, I was an intern at an organization called the Operations Research Office of the Department of the Army. And they sent me to Korea to study the impact of the US Army on Korean life for which I was spectacularly ill-equipped. <laughs> but it gave me an opportunity to travel around the country in the middle of the Korean War. The country was devastated the largest building in Seoul was the headquarters of the Japanese governor that had still be, has since been torn down. No one would have believed it possible that a day would come that a secretary general of the United Nations would be a distinguished Korean leader. Or that Korea would look as it does today. It would have seemed totally improbable that a Korean diplomat would travel around the world acting in some respect as a conscience of mankind. A Secretary General of the United Nations who is active in places as far flung as Syria, Sudan, Burma, seeking to mediate and allay suffering. That this was possible at all is a tribute to the faith and dedication of the Korean people who had the vision to overcome their suffering and their destruction and emerge as one of the leading countries of Asia and of the world. And it is e equally true due to the qualities of a Secretary General who has, as a diplomat, and now in his current position, taken a position of wise and subtle leadership. His conduct is 
unassuming. His demeanor is modest. And as he has said on one occasion, modesty is an aspect of demeanor. It is not an attribute of vision and purpose. He has shown vision and purpose, and he has done it from the delicate position of having to earn the confidence of the many conflicting tendencies that exist in the world today. This is really the first period in which international affairs have become truly global in the sense that portion that actions in any part of the world affect every other part and that every part of the world is conscious of what the other parts do. And in his capacity as Secretary General, Bram Kimmel has put forward the five-year action plan that deals with climate and environmental challenges, non-proliferation, counter-terrorism, combating infectious disease, strengthening the international financial system, ensuring global gro growth and sustainable development. And so it is no accident that the first Asian leader to receive this award from the Atlantic Council should receive it not primarily for the efforts he conducted on behalf of his nation, but for the efforts he has conducted on behalf of humanity, of providing a forum where disputes can be aired, a mechanism where conciliation can be attempted and a possibility in which serious efforts can be made to discuss the many technical problems in a world in which the traditional conflicts are no longer domi dominant, but new visions are needed for those issues that can only be dealt with on a global basis. So I'm very grateful to the Atlantic Council for giving me this opportunity to pay tribute to a distinguished leader. And I'm obliged to point out to you that the Atlantic Council organizers, not fully confident that I would acquit myself <laughs> adequately of this, have asked me not only to introduce the Secretary General, but to introduce a video <laughs> of the Secretary General. After which, I will give the award for the distinguished international leadership <laughs> to my admired friend, the Secretary General of the United Nations.